Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. And something juicy popped this morning while taking a look for my newest video in regards to the JRC folks. And I tell you, as soon as I saw this pop up, I said, oh, hell no. And why am I not surprised it has to deal with ABA International? For those who like to continue to say that ABA is good and it teaches us how to in ingratiate ourselves into society, let me show you who these people really are. So we are going back to that usual world, folks, of the JRC case. And before we get started, the garbage article we are about to read will be linked in the description as well as the first video that is in regards to covering everything in regards to the JRC, as well as the Shut the Judge Rotenberg Center Down petition. If you haven't already signed it, folks, please do. Now, when we talk about the JRC, usually involved are vivid descriptions of the abuse and torture of people with disabilities. So if you have young ones present, please use your headphones. Now, I'm a little bit more awake than usual. My schedule has me working me a little bit later in the morning, thank God. But just in case I stumble over any jargon or words, my apologies in advance. So, to begin, this is the Association for Behavior Analysis International, 47th Annual Convention Online. Event Details, Symposium 272, Challenging the FBA, FDA Ban on Electrical Stimulation Devices. This is literally one of their keynotes, folks. These people who support ABA are right behind these goddamn torturers at the Judge Rotenberg Center. I have another one to add to the list, it looks like. So let's go ahead and expose these bastards this morning, shall we? Okay, so this was marked for this just this past summer, not that long ago, back in May 30th, 2021. And apparently it was just a 10-minute thing. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Let's go to the abstract. Aversive conditioning devices have been utilized for treatment, refractory, self-injury, aggression, and other problem behaviors for over 50 years. You evil sons of bitches. All aversive therapy should be banned, you sick fucks. In March of 2020, six years after disclosing consideration of a ban, the Food and Drug Administration banned the electrical stimulation devices including the graduated electronic decolator for the treatment of self-injurious and aggressive behavior. Yes, they should. The Judge Rotenberg Center and JRC Parents Petition Association petitioned the FDA for a stay of action in relation to the ban and have filed an appeal of the ban with the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. The FDA issued a partial stay allowing patients already using ESDs to continue such use evil bastards. Here we review the regulatory history of ESDs and the attack on ESD research methodology, internal FDA documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, and provide a status update on the challenge to the FDA ban. Taken together, we argue the FDA plan places political considerations before individual needs of clients. They need this. You hear that, folks? We need this. We need to be shocked. We need to be tortured. You gotta beat that autism out of them. You gotta torture them. You gotta torture them real good so they can get that autism out of them. Mm-hmm. Fuck me. I try not to hate people. I do. But I hope, I hope that hell does exist just for these people. <sighs> okay, so, yeah, keywords. I'll give them keywords. Evil bastards. Okay, so, 
I'm going to cover a couple paragraph at this real quick, and then we're going to talk about these evil bastards. Okay. Regulatory history and mirroring criticisms of research methodology in electrical stimulation devices in small end designs. Don O'Neill. From the JRC, why am I not surprised? Aversive conditioning devices have been utilized for treatment of refractory self-injurious aggression and other be problem behaviors for over 50 years. That doesn't make it right. They bled people for medical treatment for years, and we still found out that's not the right way to be handling illness. Early devices were not regulated or classified by the FDA. Um, actually, you're full of shit. There's documentation that says otherwise. You are already being called out on a lie. I call you out. I call you out because in your lawsuit, your own lawsuit says different. The 126-page FDA document says different. But go off, you evil Mm. There have only been two medical devices banned by the FDA, powdered medical gloves and implantable prosthetic hair fibers. In 2020, the FDA presented a final ruling to ban the use of devices for the treatment of self-injury and aggression, but not the device itself. An overview of regulatory history of the electrical stimulation devices with emphasis on the graduated electronic decalator is provided. Additionally, the methodological attacks on the ESD, more methodical pair, people, methodical, we're just evil people who want to take away torture from kids. Excuse me for having a sense that torturing disabled people at their most vulnerable is wrong. <sighs> Research such mirror common objections to single subject research methodology and behavior analysis are discussed. For example, the use of small samples demonstration of cause and effect without randomized control trial. The, yeah, because it has been deemed by the rest of the freaking medical planet to be unethical. Seriously? Limits of generalization and prosthetic versus Curative and dependent variables. It's been proven it doesn't cure shit. You are torturing people to torture people. The strengths and limitations of ESD research and treatment applications are discussed in relation of code of ethics. So, what you're saying is, in spite of current medical law and any sense of decency... You want these tests carried out on vulnerable kids. It's not enough that you abuse the students in your care. You want the whole world of autistics to be experiencing that level of pain for the crime of existing. Codes pertain to the reliance on scientific knowledge, treatment efficiency, and punishment procedures. Interesting that they say scientific knowledge. If you remember in that video with Anderson Cooper, remember, folks, that these devices have not in any way been peer-reviewed because that's how science works. That's how medical science especially works. It has to be peer-reviewed and not a single person outside of the JRC wanted to stand up to corroborate this evil shit. Okay, now... Challenging the FDA ban on electrical stimulation devices. In March of 2020, six years after disclosing consideration of a ban, the FDA banned electrical stimulation devices, including the graduated electronic decalator, for the treatment of self-injurious and aggressive behavior. It's called they are, don't want us to be tortured, you evil the JRC Parents Association and the Judge Rotenberg Center petitioned the FDA for a stay of action in relation to the ban and have filed an appeal of the ban in the United States Courts of Appeals for the District of Columbia. This is why we're fighting, folks. We cannot fail these kids. No more 
tortured disabled people in the name of treatment. No more. The FDA issued a partial stay allowing patients already using ESDs to continue such use. Here the current status and rationale for the challenging the ban is presented. It's no rationale. We read that document. The FDA acknowledged that the existence of treatment refractory patients. However, the FDA claims that literature shows ESD cause harm and do not cause a long-term conditioning effect. Thank you. By your own words, no less. You all have said multiple times that the minute these people go off the devices, their behaviors return. Therefore, what long-term conditioning is taking place here? None. Literally none. You are traumatizing people just for the sake of it. Just say it. Just be honest. Further positive behavioral support, not applied behavior but analysis, is offered as a state-of-the-art treatment for SIBAB. Well, you're already proving why no one should trust ABA. These claims are critically analyzed and discussed. Through documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, we show the FDA failed to disclose expert opinions indicating ESD efficacy. Um, nope, more like you all failed because no one outside of the JRC uses these things anymore because they have deemed them unethical as they should. When you're talking about medicine that was practiced 30 to 60 years ago, that has since gone by the wayside, you ever think, I don't know, there might be a reason for that? The FDA also failed to disclose opinions from 16 of its own scientists suggesting ESDs presented only a remote probability of serious adverse health consequences. They bought up enough scientists, okay? It is not their job to represent you people. Their case is against you and the devices you use. You had the burden to provide the experts from across the medical universe to explain the positive effects of this so-called treatment. You failed. Burden of proof is upon the accuser. They provided theirs. That's why the ban came. You all are failing miserably, but you would rather blame the victims for, you know, breathing and existing while autistic or disabled than look at the fact that you are disgusting, torturing, evil sons of bitches. <clears throat> so, folks, if ever you wanted to know why we detest and stand against all forms of ABA, may I show you Exhibit A. The fact that ABA International gave this evil, freaking indoctrination camp, and that's what it is. It's indoctrination for the parents. It's trying to force these kids to accept abuse and get that that autism that disability tortured out of them it's an indoctrination camp it's what it is it's a camp for torture and abuse using devices we do not use on war criminals against vulnerable kids with disabilities but aba international oh they're just fine with that those same individuals, I bet, would freaking yell their lungs out if it was done on a war criminal. I'd put money on it. People with ABA, let me tell you what ABA is. It is not the fluffy thing that they tell you it is. Use ABA techniques. Ah, oh, but do you ever think about what those techniques are actually trying to do? It is trying to basically remove everything about an autistic from them. It teaches us to hate ourselves. That we, being 
as who we are, our wonderful autistic selves, will be never good enough. So we must learn to mask. We must learn to obey. We must learn to conform. We must uh, learn to allow others to touch us in any way that they see fit and to never say no. I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. It teaches parents to ignore their autistic kids when they are screaming and could be in horrible pain because they think we do it for attention. Again, this is not a joke. To ignore your child when they are in pain, when they are suffering, when they are dealing horrific oversensory, ignore them. When we are going into meltdown because we are overwhelmed, ignore them. They teach things such as food deprivation, sleep deprivation, and that's just scratching the surface. ABA <clears throat> and what this school is doing to the disabled kids there go hand and hand. Never forget that. This is who they really are. This is who they back. So, I don't ever, ever want somebody to come into my threads or in my videos to tell me how ABA has helped their kids ever again. Ever again. All right. That's all I got for this morning, folks. And as always, we're going to go ahead and close out here. So, we don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time by YouTube. So, folks, please don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the comments. And spread this, guys. Spread this like wildfire because ABA International stands with the abusers and the torturers of the JRC. They, too, need to be held accountable. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, we here at Smelling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye. <clears throat>